is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good yawning this morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Wednesday, the 19th of July, 2023, which means it's a on the clock Guardian Radio AM mashup man down Wednesday. And we've got two exciting conversations for you this morning. Before we get into our conversation with our guests, I got a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, let me start at the top. Remember, the Agrarian Awards are looking for nominees. They're calling for nominations for local farmers. Agrarian relates to agriculture, people who does grow things. Anyway, a quick note. All nominees must be registered farmers. All nominees must be registered farmers. So if you want to nominee, nominate someone, if you want, are you suggesting that someone nominate themselves, remember they have to be a registered farmer. Now registration is very easy. First of all, it's free of charge. That's the easiest part. You go down to the Gladstone Road uh, compound, the Ministry of Agriculture Gladstone Road compound to register. It's free of charge. Please ensure that you are registered so that your contribution to local agriculture can be recognized and acknowledged formally. I think the Agrarian Awards are going to be a great show. I personally grow ideas, so I'm going to run down to agriculture and see if I could get registered for that uh, farming discipline. A lot of us grow ideas, and we, we should be recognized as well. Now, into our Sand Dollar Live reads. Today, Wednesday, the 19th of July, Central Bank representatives will be giving out Sand Dollars at Quality Supermarket, Sea Grape Shopping Plaza. Show your, dollar, your Sand Dollar-enabled digital wallet at the door and receive $20. Spend $18 or more in sand dollars at the register and get $5 back when you leave the store. The offer is limited to the first 100 customers to show us their sand dollar enabled wallet at each location. One top up per person so as many people as possible can experience the sand dollar. For more details, visit any of the sand dollar social media pages or call 302-9880. Now for our on-the-clock sand dollar giveaways, every day for the next three months, we'll be giving away sand dollars to digital wallet holders. Every day, two winners can receive $30 in sand dollars. To be eligible to win, you must have a digital wallet and answer the trivia question correctly. When you call in, give the producer your name and number, digital wallet provider, and your digital wallet address to transfer the funds to your digital wallet if you get the right answer. Listeners are restricted to one transfer for the duration of the competition. You can only win once. Let me throw out the numbers for today. 323-6232, 325-4316, 325-4259, and for people in the Bahamas but not in New Providence, 242-300-5720. That's 242-300-5720. The text line as always, powered by BTC, 422-GR96, that's 422-4796. Now, joining me this morning, I have representatives from the Nassau Rowing Club, the U.S. Embassy, and we have a special guest in town. Very special to me. If you saw me this morning, you could see that I am in my Bahama Games uniform, representing 
the capital of the Bahamas, Nassau. Oh, okay, just making sure. I just, yeah, <laughs> y'all didn't feel to register that team. <laughs> now, because Nassau is separate from New Providence, slightly. Anyway, I'm in my Bahama Games gear today because I'm featuring representatives from the greatest sport in Bahamian history, rowing. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Joining me in studio again are guests from the Nassau Rowing Club and the U.S. Embassy. And today we're going to be talking about the sport rowing. I'm going to slip in some appeals for rowing, but I don't think that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about rowing. We have a special guest in studio. I'm going to go around the table and ask everyone to introduce themselves, starting from my left. Uh, I'm Sumaya Abodole. I'm the public affairs officer at the U.S. Embassy and really excited to be here to have a conversation about rowing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> hey, my name is Arshe. I'm from the United States, Chicago. Uh, I'm excited to come and bring my film and talk a little bit about my book and, and, and a lot about rowing. Absolutely. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Kyle Shea, proud graduate of Queens College. <laughs> I had to go on there. I had to go. <laughs> yes, <I> had to <laughs> go. Uh, Founder and president of the Nassau Rowing Club. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. And joining me is Mr. C. A. Nuri. No, I'm quiet today. I'm, I'm excited about this row. It, no, I'm sorry, rowing <laughs> thing we're doing today. I finally get you in the right atmosphere. I have my secret weapon because you know the secret weapon to rowing is. What I want to know, right? If R O W. It rhymes with H O W. H O W is how, and R O W is row. Well, ex exactly. <laughs> so we're talking about rowing or, row or rowing. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna have an expert in studio in the next hour, right? That expert will be able to clarify for us why R O W, right? That spell like how, end up being row and not row. But. I've got some ganep, Mr. Nuri. Go ahead. I just want the Bahamas to know, if ever you row in and you don't know how to defeat your opponent, what you do is you pause the row and you offer them some ganep. Ain't nobody could win a row with ganep in their mouth. It's just impossible. <laughs> and that is why I am the reigning rowing champion of the Bahamas. <laughs> but our guests are in studio today to talk about a number of opportunities to expand the sport of rowing in the country and opportunities for students and young people to expand their educational opportunities through sports, right? And yes. so uh, let's start here on my left. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone, again. Uh, I'd like to share that the US Embassy uh, here in Nassau partnered with the Nassau Rowing Club um, to host and bring Arche Cooper here to the Bahamas to experience the, all the beauty the Bahamas has to offer. Um, it's part of our, uh, our overall goal to use sports to empower youth. We're aiming to bridge that gap between education, the gender gap, because um, especially young girls aren't always fully represented in different sports. And so rowing is an opportunity for young bohemian girls to partake in the sport and also an access to higher education in the United States. There Absolutely. are several scholarships available, and throughout the week we'll be sharing um, where people can find more opportunities. Absolutely. Um, I just want to make a note. I know Cecil knows this as well, that we have a culture, though. We, we have an entrenched, sustained culture of young Bahamians advancing their educational opportunities through sports, right? Mm -hmm. uh, taking advantage of, in a positive way, sports opportunities and scholarships Correct. to ensure that they can get a degree. Um, and I mean, decades of that. And this is a wonderful opportunity to expand that and into yes. a new sport. And then we couple it with the naming of the national sport, the renaming of the national sport as sailing. Mm -hmm. Right, and so this is a, a great meld. Let's uh, advance the national sport and advance our students through the national sport. Now, I know the national sport is sloop sailing. Correct. But rowing is kind of, kind of close. You're on the water. There you we're, go. We're trying to expand the sports boat. on the water, and I, you're in a boat. And you're not supposed to tip over. Exactly. So I think those are three main similarities. Right All right. There. So, Kyle, <laughs> morning. Morning. The Nassau Rowing Club, how are you participating in this activity, in this uh, 
series of events. We are really just excited to bring Arshay here. Uh, Arshay's a friend of mine. Um, one, basically, the cultural context here is that rowing for many years was a historically white male upper class sport. Yeah. There's not a lot of folks who look like us. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we were the only yeah. on our team. I was definitely the only brown person on my college team at Vassar College. Um, and so Arshay's book, A Most Beautiful Thing, talks about him growing up in this community, and I'll, I'll turn it over to him. I think he can say it far better than I ever can. Right. And so we, we're going we're gonna to talk about the book. So Nassau Rowing Club, you're hosting Mr. Arshay Cooper. Yes, ma'am. And you are hosting, along with the U.S. Embassy, a rowing exhibition event. You're inviting students to come and explore the sport, mm -hmm. explore the Nassau Rowing Club, uh, speak to staff about scholarship opportunities that are available through the sport, and then you are hosting a film night. Correct. The right. film night is on Thursday at 7 o'clock at Fusion. Um, we invite everybody to register on our link uh, that's on our Instagram and our Facebook page, U.S. Embassy NASA. Um, and then on Friday, we've got clinics open in the afternoon uh, for the general, for students ranging 13 to around 17 years old who can come check out the sport with their parents. Um, they just need to register on the link and they can learn all about the different things that uh, rowing can offer. Well, let's, let's throw the link out right now. Uh, the link uh, is, is like an Eventbrite link. So you have to click on it in our Instagram. So what I would throw out is go to our social media, which is at U.S. Embassy NASA. If you remember nothing else, check out our social media and you can learn all about the programs we have right. this week. So go to the U.S. Embassy NASA. Social, media, NASA mm -hmm. social media pages, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook. And we, um, we will add it to Twitter later today. Oh, um, yeah. And if you get lost, our links for all our social media are also on our website. So if you Google U.S. Embassy NASA, you'll get right. to our website. And the rowing clinics are taking place again on Friday. At the University of the Bahamas in the American Corner. At the Harry Seymour Library. Correct. The American Corner is right um, within the library there. Right. And we're looking at 1.30 to 2.30 session, first Correct. session. And then the second session three is to 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Correct. Okay. That's awesome. So, guys, that's your Friday afternoon. Pick up the kids from summer camp and head down to the Harry Seymour Library. You're looking for the American Corner. And you're looking for the rowing clinics. Yes, Mr. Newey. I just wanted to ask Mr. Shea the opportunities rowing has afforded him. And then we want to go over to the movies and how it connects to this rowing thing. But um, in terms of rowing and you doing it here locally, how did it, what type of opportunities it afforded you in general? So kind of, kind of roundabout, um, I'll answer your question with a non-answer. Um, I found out about rowing when I got to college. Um, I was the All Bahamas Merit Scholar, 2006. I was an academic. Never pictured myself as an athlete. But I got to college, saw this as an opportunity, and in speaking with my teammates who had rowed through high school, I realized that they approached the admissions process in a very different way than I did. And so delving into this further and looking at scholarship opportunities through Title IX, which redistributed the amount of scholarships available to men and women um, to have a more equal playing field and more parity across all sports of, of, of the genders. Um, I saw a great opportunity here, given our track and field background uh, and understanding that there's a certain number of scholarships there, but we can expand that pool through different sports and diversify those opportunities. So Title IX provides a great number of scholarships um, to NCAA Division I and two universities. Um, I think in excess of 2,000 scholarships and a significant number of athletes are on more than half uh, of tuition covered by those scholarships. Uh, I get calls and emails very frequently from universities who, kind of going back to the original point of rowing being a historically white upper class sport, with everything that happened in 2020, uh, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, uh, people are realizing that there needs to be diversity or, or an increased focus in uh, attracting and retaining diversity. Um, and so with, you know, three to five percent of collegiate rowers being black and a population of the Bahamas, which is significantly majority black, with an athletic tradition, we can provide athletes, form that pipeline, 
send women and girls that may never have considered college uh, to be an option for them through sport uh, and, and change their lives. Mm -hmm. And you, you just said 2,000 plus scholarships focused on rowing alone? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and probably even growing, uh, the statistics right. are So aged. in terms of the local rowing scene, how many schools and clubs are offering rowing to students? So right now, NASA Rowing Club is partnering um, specifically with you know, CR Walkers, where we've gotten most of our students, through an initiative that we call Opportunities and Access Rowing Squad. The acronym conveniently is WARS. Mm. Um, <laughs> and we partnered with the Ministry of Education, uh, Minister Glennis Hannah Martin, Mr. Evan Wisdom, last October, uh, to do an island-wide recruitment exercise. Um, and basically, that program is designed to remove as many barriers to participation as possible. Mm -hmm. So a couple examples. If a student doesn't know how to get to the lake, um, we provide transportation from CR Walker. Right. If they don't know how to swim, we will provide swimming lessons as a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, if they don't have the appropriate clothes to row, we have pieces of rowing clothing that have been donated from partners in the U.S., U.K., and Canada. Now, so, well, pause. Why, yeah. What do you mean I need special clothes to row? So the rowing boats are very small, mm -hmm. um, and loose clothing can get caught on moving parts. So there's actually, if you've been on a rowing machine in the gym, there's a handle, yeah. which simulates the oar handle. Uh, there's a sliding seat with wheels. And so if you're wearing baggy clothes and your shirt gets caught, shirt or pants get caught in one of those wheels, you won't be able to go. So if you Google um, rowing unisu, unitard, um, it's a, it's a lot of fit people wearing very tight clothing. Now, Mr. Cooper, we're going to get to you because I need to know, how are you on the lake in Chicago rowing <laughs> in, in, not in a jacket and boots and moccasins <laughs> and a tam, in, in the windiest of the cities? But also, before we sort of transition there, what's the difference between an oar and a skull? A <laughs> right, a skull, because you're sculling. Well, you right. Well, do you have one oar? What's the, what's the difference? I know the difference between sculling and rowing, but what's, is it the same thing, or is it slightly, like, is it technically different? It's technically different. Okay. Um, so rowing, you have two classes. You have sculling, in which one rower has two oars, right. two handles, one in each hand. And then you also have sweeping, which is traditionally what you think about with eight Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, eight people in a boat, one long oar each, both hands on the handle. Okay. Um, now, Bahamian Skullin, what we probably think about is actually a, and this is getting real technical, so Mr. Newry's going to love this. Uh, it's more of a universal technique. So it's the same kind of twisting propulsion move. It's, it's kind of like a corkscrew movement. Mm -hmm. Um that you would use in smaller craft, and you see this in Thailand, uh, Peru, here. It's just a technique that some person figured out thousands of years ago and has kind of been adapted and transmitted across cultures, and that's all how it right. goes. I was with you all the way up till sweeping. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He added a new term, and it was yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I like rowing. <laughs> in the domestic games, I go win. Sweeping, I go lose, though. All right, so uh, there are a number of opportunities for young people. You are currently running the program through CR Walker. So I want to ask, if my child is not at CR Walker, but I want to participate, how do I connect? Do I go to CR? Can, well, first of all, can I connect? Yes. And do I go to CR Walker, or do I contact the Nassau Rowing Club? So you contact the Nassau Rowing Club, uh, but as Sumaya was saying, the the exhibition that we're having at the Harry Seymour Library is exactly the same type of talent identification that we had in October with the Ministry of Education. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is spread the net as far and as wide as possible. This is a bad example, but I'm going to use it anyway. In uh, Soviet states, what the national rowing team would do was just drive around and look for the biggest, strongest people they could find working construction sites, manual labor. They would tell them, you are now on the rowing team and they would teach them how to do it. And that's how they would stack their national team. Okay. So what we're looking for in these talent identification opportunities is we want to people who can not only uh, exert the power needed to be an attractive athlete, but also the mental grit to be able to do that over 2,000 meters. So it's fine to kind of sprint 
you know, for 30 seconds or a minute. But a rowing race can be anywhere from six and a half minutes to 20 minutes. Okay. And it hurts. Yeah. I, I, I want you. I, I agree. I just want to backpedal back to um, the exhibition. What can I expect at the exhibition? Yep. Who should be there at the exhibition? And again, the time, because I, I see it, but I, I want to hash out exactly who I should bring. I'm bringing the crowd. Yeah. Who, who coming? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so what to expect? Anyone who is interested, I don't care if you've been on a rowing machine, never heard of a rowing machine, show up and call rowing rowing. That's fine. Yeah. Hopefully Aaron can bring some good up for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we will teach you basic rowing technique. And it's the same technique that you do on this machine is the same one that the Olympians do when they're training to win a gold medal. And we will take you from knowing nothing, uh, run you through a series of short tests, 30 seconds to a minute, just to see how you adapt to the technique, how you react to certain things, and how, how hard you can really press. Uh, and the types of people who should show up to this, anyone who's interested in the sport, even vaguely, um, if you've seen The Social Network and that rowing scene with the Winklevoss twins, yeah. um, if you've um, seen the intro to House, I don't know if people remember House, yeah, the yeah. show, um, but, and, and if you're interested in figuring out how to change your life, how to expand your opportunities, uh, this is a great way to do it. We can talk through the coaches that we know. Uh, there are a number of head coaches at Division One and Two schools that are very much within our network. Um, that would love to speak with these athletes, and they say, can you get us Bahamian athletes? And so a lot of this comes down to performance on the rowing machine. Right. It's great to have them on the water, but we need to have them on the rowing mm -hmm. machine as well. All right, so the example you gave uh, from Russia is an excellent example, because when I go scouting, I get in on a boat and I go into the family islands, right? Like, that's, that's where I immediately, when you said, that's what I thought. So how can family island students and young people connect do you plan on doing a session in the Family Islands, or are you requesting uh, sort of stakeholders in the Family Islands, PE teachers, administrators, uh, particularly the local sporting councils uh, the, uh, for the Bahama Games, to identify students uh, to send up or to connect with the Nassau Rowing Club and the uh, clinic exercise, uh, first point. Second point, um, is this restricted to young students only. I know the Nassau Rowing Club is open to uh, students of all ages, right? You're and open adults. To people, and, right, adults um, of all ages. Are the clinics and the scholarship opportunities also open to older or mature students? I would have to check on that, but I'm yeah. sure that could be arranged. I mean, it all at the end of the day, it all comes down to NCAA eligibility, okay. which doesn't start until you become a student. So okay. if you don't have a degree um, and want to get a degree and can meet the minimum recruiting standards for these coaches, um, as well as can meet the academic standards to get in, uh, that is a conversation that the coaches can probably have. But these coaches go to the under-19 world championships, under-23 world champions, specifically to talk to these athletes. Mm -hmm. They say, we know you can perform. Let's figure out the academic situation and bring you over. Right, and so there will be academic support as well, uh, particularly for athletes that um, exhibit extreme talent. That's, that's the plan, we wanna yeah. build that out. Okay. So you, to your earlier point on the Family Islands, I think that's a great point. If you are in town for the Bahamas Games, are a Family Island sports administrator, PE teacher, coach, uh, civic leader, come out, meet us, we wanna talk to you. Um, what we've done so far has only been on New Providence just because we're so limited in terms of our resources. Um, mm -hmm. But to give you an example, uh, there's a young lady, Beatrice Bethel, she's a graduate of C.R. Walker, uh, current UB student. She had no idea what rowing was. She showed up, stuck around the boathouse, started helping out our coach. She's now an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. Last summer, she was the assistant coach on our national team that competed in Canada. Nice. Uh, and so these, these are the opportunities. Um, what we want to do is talk to folks in the family islands and figure out ways that we can put a rowing machine out there so that we can identify those talents that exist out there. Once they're identified, we'd like to invite them to New Providence because Lake Cunningham is unique because mm -hmm. there are so few Caribbean and Bahamian islands with a lake of our size. 
that fits an Olympic distance. So effectively turning Lake Cunningham into a rowing center of excellence, not only for the Bahamas, but also for the Caribbean. So we identify those talents that exist, bring them to New Providence, put them together, form a national team, go out there and succeed. Wow. And the embassy is it really um, been working on trying to expand opportunities to the family island. So for this initial opportunity, we're try we're connecting with our alumni who've participated in U.S. government programs, like some of our track and field coaches and other mm. people who are involved in sport, to invite because a lot of them are in town because of the Bahamas Games to initially connect here and like Kyle mentioned, see where we can build it and where we can find talent out in the family islands. All right, before we go to a break, producers getting ready to take us to a break. This seems like a wonderful uh, opportunity to partner with the Ministry of Health and Wellness and BTVI, right? Yes. Because they need rowing machines down in the Family Islands. What a wonderful, like a novel, right? A novel way to exercise. And you can encourage people to get healthy, look at rowing as a part of a regular health uh, and exercise routine, and then BTVI is to ensure that we have technicians on all islands to service that's our true. rowing machines, right? And keep them up and running because it should become a regular routine for participants. And we are partnering with the Ministry of Youth uh, and Culture um, and Sport. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Most, and uh, the Lyford Key Foundation focus group to also provide other opportunities through the week for them to get exposure to it as well. Absolutely. Guys, we're going to a break. Let me remind you the first question of the day. When was the National Rowing Club founded? When was the National Rowing Club founded? And when we get back from the break, we're going to delve into our conversation with Mr. Arshay Cooper, our author. He is the feature of, uh, or the focus of the film, A Most Beautiful Thing, which will be uh, showing, premiering in the Bahamas mm -hmm. this weekend. And you hear that last name, Cooper. In the break, we're going to do a quick interrogation to see where Mr. Cooper is from. Exuma. And well, we have to check. <laughs> Because I think he is a bohemian. You guys, stay tuned. <laughs> we'll be right back. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Wait. The father is saying it, but I can't say it with them. You ready? Let's go back. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock. Let me throw out these numbers again. And our first trivia question, we're almost running out of time. I think I'm going to throw out the second trivia question as well. Remember, you can only answer one question at a time. And if you get the first question wrong, you can't answer the second question. You get a call back in to answer. So the first question is, when was the Nassau Rowing Club founded? When was the Nassau Rowing Club founded? And the second question is, on what day of the week does the Nassau Guardian publish the Grand Bahama News? On what day of the week does the Nassau Guardian publish the Grand Bahama News? Numbers to call 323-622-325-4316, 325-4259, 242-300-5720. 
for people in the Bahamas, but not in New Providence. Like you may be in an island like Grand Bahama. Okay, let's get back into this conversation. Mr. Nuri, please join me in welcoming Mr. Ashe Cooper to the show. He is a ROA, best-selling and award-winning author, a two-time Golden Oar recipient for his contributions to the sport of rowing, a motivational speaker, activist, and the protagonist of the film, A Most Beautiful Thing. Uh, Mr. Ashe Cooper grew up on the west side of Chicago in a community surrounded by gangs and drugs. In 1997, he joined and later became captain of the country's first all-black high school rowing team at Manly High School, an experience that changed his life. And he's here today to share with us exactly how his life has changed and uh, how he shares that process with others so they can also change their lives. Good morning, Mr. Cooper. Good morning. Excited to be here. Absolutely. I haven't seen you eat a Gnep yet, so I, the test, <laughs> we haven't completed the test to see if you are Bahamian. But the resilience, you know, uh, the, the resilience, the persistence that you've shown easily qualifies you for Bahamian citizenship. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Thank you to Nassau Rowing Club and the U.S. Embassy and The Guardian for having me. All right. So you're here on a book and movie tour. Yeah. And to help get kids in, um, in a boat. Absolutely. Um, when I learned how to row uh, to sail, actually, the first thing the instructor said is, we're going to learn how to capsize the boat. And I told him, no, sir, I'm from the Bahamas. <laughs> the first thing we're going to learn is how to not capsize <laughs> the boat. How did you get into sailing? Rowing. 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 I, I categorize them all as the same thing. Are they not the same thing? <laughs> no. They're not no. the same thing. <laughs> well, I, I would first start off saying that, you know, rowing, it, for me, it, it was not an introduction to sports, but it was an introduction to wellness. Um, you know, I grew up on the west side of Chicago. Uh, at that time, it, the na my neighborhood was the second most violent neighborhood in all of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I heard gunshots when I slept. I um, lost a lot of friends. Uh, I skipped over pools of blood. Uh, you know, you have young people who have seen what most soldiers have seen in war, but before they're 14 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so it was hard to concentrate in school or, you know, be a good teammate. Um, but one day, you know, I, I walked into school and in, in the lunchroom, I saw a boat. And I was like, what the heck is that? I've never seen a boat. We don't, I mean, we're not even close to the water where we live. Mm -hmm. And um, and they said, uh, hey, um, you have an opportunity to be a part of the first all-black high school rowing team. And I didn't even know what that was. I was like, oh, that seems cool. But no one signed up. And I remember going to school the next day. The boat was there. And this time, it says, if you sign up, you get free pizza. And I was like, oh, doing it for the pizza. Behavior. <laughs> <laughs> you see an opportunity and you seize it. It takes it back. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, and, and, I, and I remember going out there for the first time, and I see no one who looked like me. Yeah. Uh, the sport didn't reflect the world I was used to, so I s felt like it was a good opportunity, but I said no to the opportunity mm -hmm. because I, I don't know. I know my grandmother's history in the South, but I'm not sure if I can navigate the same space that she navigated. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel like I was ready to be a trailblazer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, but my friends said, hey, I think we should check it out. And, um, and, and, and sports for me didn't work out for me because of being chased or fighting all the time or being angry. Like people said, just try sports. So I tried football and it was a lot of, it's very combative and mm -hmm. I always wanted to fight. It didn't make me feel well. And I tried basketball and it was trash talking and people would say, you're a loser, you suck. And I heard those things mm -hmm. um, from teachers and family members I love. And so I felt like sports wasn't for me. But the moment, I went out there to check out rowing, and we was pushed out into open water, the same survival mode that tells you, hey, if you hear a gunshot run, told everyone in this boat, in order to get back to the dock safely, you have to pull for each other. In order to pull for each other, you have to shut up, you have to listen, and the coach is saying, sit tall, breathe. You belong here. Mm -hmm. And to go from seeing dirt and concrete every day to water and grass changed everything. Mm -hmm. So being out there downloading that serenity 
And before it becomes a sport of competitiveness, it becomes a sport of meditation. And you're developing this magical rhythm. And and it was non-combative and non-conflict. And so it was the first sport that didn't trigger the trauma. It reduced the trauma. And that's when I fell in love with the sport of rowing. The first sport that didn't trigger the trauma, it reduced the trauma. So are you going to have opportunities for coaches as well, because from just from you speaking, uh, young people who are entrenched in com- in communities and spaces that are filled with violence, right? Just offering sports, and then kids go into that space, and that space is also violent. is re trigger is triggering. It re traumatizes young people. And so it's important for coaches to understand that thing you said, that it, 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 it was more meditation than competition, right? Yeah. The, the most important part of this organized sport activity is bringing athletes together on a team, right? Um, yeah. Fantastic. And, and I guess a lot of that also has to do with the, with the coaches and creating that environment yeah. for young people to realize that and then and put it into action. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, and again, I think that was perfect what you said, because it wasn't just this boat and then get in, and that was the wellness piece. It was really uh, amazing youth development coaches who understood speed and also working with the individual, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that wholeness aspect of, of, of the sport that um, the coaches were bringing to us. And my team were guys from different gangs in different neighborhoods, and we came together and we learned that in the boat of eight that, hey, you can't do the work of eight. How do we get eight to do the work of one? And we get the job done faster. And that was the lesson inside of the boat and the lesson outside of the boat. Yeah. I would say uh, just a quick shout out uh, to the side, to Tamara Morton, that reminded me. Is there another QC comment? I'm kind of, Who reminded me that uh, often we are struggling for unity when we should be uh, working for harmony. Right, yeah. and so we don't all have to be the same, right? Mm-hmm. But that we can be different and still be in harmony. And I imagine that this sport of rowing, right? And like you say, bringing the eight to one mm-hmm. is less about unifying a group of people and more about harmonizing mm-hmm. a group of people. Yes. How, you know, what a wonderful experience, sir. So tell us now, so you, you are on the team, how you win a championship and you ain't never been on the water before? Sir. <laughs> well, I think that you know, I you know, we we had to learn water safety, right? We yeah. had to learn how to swim, um, you know, and, and that was terrifying because we didn't have access to the to the pool or anything. But you know, our coaches called it water confidence, and so we just learned to build a relationship with the water, stead in the pool, um, step by step, learning how um, to swim. And from there, I think that's when we became uh, more 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 competitive. Uh, just day by day, you know, um, and, and, and also having folks who, who've been where we uh, wanted to go to come and just really talk to us and work with us, those one-on-one meetings with coaches. And uh, from there, it, be- it, it became competitive. Right. Okay, so you, then you wrote a book. Yeah. We're going to sort of fast forward. Yeah. You wrote a book. Like, how did you get to the place, like the sort of transition, how did you get to the place where you say, look here, I got to write this down. I got to share this with people. Yeah, you know, I think as people asking me my story, I, I think that the, the, the amazing thing about rowing is that it is an academic sport, right? The, the goal is to, to go to college. The goal is yeah. to get a scholarship, right? And, and so along the way, you're learning all these amazing things on, on discipline and, and mm-hmm. structure and time management and, um, you know, doing more. And so those lessons really uh, took me into writing and telling my story and, and putting it all out there. And then I wrote this book. Um, the world loved it. And then we produced this film. Um, uh, the, produ- the producers, Common, Dwayne Wade, and Grant Hill. And, uh, you know, those guys came together and, and we we felt like that this is a sport that everyone should know about mm-hmm. um, because of the um, wellness piece, but also the academic piece. I mean, this year alone, we have kids who grew up just like I did, who's going to U Miami, that's going to Brown, that's going to some of the best universities. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we can have young kids here. I was just in South Africa. I was in the UK before that. I was in Brazil. And now I'm here and I'm hoping to, um, you know, I have university coaches calling me all the time. Who do you have? Who do you have? And so... I am having a big camp 
that's happening. I do a, a camp in Vermont every year, and we have kids coming from all over the world. We have a young man that's going to come here from, um, that's going to come and meet us in the States from um, here from the uh, Nassau Rowing Club. And um, and these kids, they're going to meet yeah. university coaches, and it's going to be the most exciting. Can event. we shout out their name um, or, or we not exposing them to the public yet? Yeah. We'll All right. We'll keep it low-key. We keep it low-key. Yeah. Uh, any fundraising support needed to ensure that this young uh, athlete or uh, anybody else can get to the camp? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're hoping that um, this week can bring more resources so we can bring more kids every single year um, and, and also be able to bring college coaches to come visit these kids from the U.S. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I love this. This is fantastic. Tell us when, the both of you guys, tell us, when the movie night is, what do I need to do to come and watch the movie? The movie is free, I repeat, free, mm -hmm. at Fusion at 7 p.m. on Thursday night, this Thursday night at 7 p.m. In order to reserve your spot, check out our Instagram um, at U.S. Embassy Nassau or our Facebook, U.S. Embassy Nassau. There is a link. All you have to do is register at the link. Super easy. You click on the link, you fill out the details, and we'll make sure that you got a spot to come um, see the film for free at 7 p.m. And then afterwards, we'll have a conversation with Arshe. So you can meet Arshe, come see the film, check out what rowing's all about, and how you can support the sport. Absolutely. Kyle, uh, let's remind people about the uh, rowing clinic on Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon, Harry Seymour Library at UB. Uh, in the American corner, so graciously provided by the U.S. Embassy, we will have rowing machines. It is 2.30... 1.30 to 2.30. 2.30 and then 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, again, the links to sign up are on the U.S. Embassy's social media at U.S. Embassy Nassau right. on Instagram. And, and you US should Embassy you should Nassau. try to register for the clinic. Yeah, yes. we want to make sure we have enough people there to share mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. information. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Mr. Cooper... I'm so glad that you were here today, having a formal conversation with an expert rower has allowed me to establish something that I knew in my heart but was unable to prove. First things first, rowing came before rowing, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> rowing then superseded and y'all changed the name of rowing to debating. Mm -hmm. See, I know that rowing was a legitimate sport. Right, but I, I I love the idea. I, I love the idea of rowing because rowing is about harmonizing a group of people to move a vehicle forward, and rowing is about an attempt to harmonize. Right, that's all rowing is. We try to harmonize our positions. What a wonderful opportunity! I'm just excited that um, there are opportunities for Bahamians to get scholarships, right? Yeah. Um, if you're in grade 10, grade 11, going in grade 12, this is something you need to come up to to find out more information about, to say, hey, what information I need to know on how to get join a rowing team to get access to a scholarship. So this this is big news, and everyone needs to turn out on Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. Thursday, yeah, Thursday Friday, and Friday, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Also, I know school is out. Teachers, teachers I know you all on vacation. But if you take a moment, if there's any student that you could think of right now, um, between now and, and Friday, that should be at that clinic, reach out to them, reach out to their parents, reach out to the island administrator, make sure that those young people are recognized and can connect to this opportunity to grow themselves through sport and to connect to educational opportunities. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Cooper. What have you done so far since you've been here? How long have you been in the country, and what have you done so far? I got in yesterday. Yeah. I experienced the rain. Yeah. You know, <laughs> first of all, sir, how blessed you are, because the five, seven days before you came here was scorching. Oh, really? And so you have been treated. Uh, uh, the Mother Nature has blessed you. Yes. Um, have you been to a beach yet? Have you been swimming? I haven't to him. Yeah, I just got it yesterday. Uh, we did have a nice dinner yesterday, which was mm. awesome. But I, I guess I should have asked you this first. Just because you are a champion, champion rower doesn't necessarily mean you like the water. In your experience, how many rowers, how many people that row also love the water? Not at first. You develop a relationship with it, and you, it becomes your love. Yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Absolutely. It, I was terrified of the water at first. But ironically, it was... It, it was terrifying, but it was my place of peace, my place of safety. So I read it, experienced the water, then the gunshots that I was experiencing. No, but, but you know, yes. without a doubt. I felt the way. Um, and, and, and 
an, an, an amazing experience for a young person that's never been in the water. Um, I wear shoes in the water even now as an adult, just in case I have to kick a shark. I just say, not animal cruelty, mm. just in case I got to get away, <laughs> right? And so, you know, sort of moving from one place of fear to another place of the, of the unknown, mm. you know, that you could be fearful about and conquering that and how conquering that unknown can help you, um, can help you back in those spaces where you have less control yeah. over your environment. But let's go through those times again. The movie, 7 eight, p.m. a most beautiful thing, yep. Fusion Superplex, 7, 7 p.m., PM Thursday night. Yep. Go to the U.S. Embassy social media pages to look for the Eventbrite link. Mm -hmm. Registration is free. Come and see the movie for free. And then Friday, Nassau Rowing Club, U.S. Embassy is hosting the Rowing Clinic. Harry Seymour Library, American Corner, first session, 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., second session, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., third Rowan session, 5 p.m. <laughs> until <laughs> you guys, and hopefully there'll be lots of gnaps available because, Mr. Cooper, I don't know if they told you this yet, Jamaican athletes are powered by yellow yam. <laughs> Bahamian athletes are powered by Ganem. <laughs> Get yourself in on some Ganem. I mean, thank you guys for joining us today. I think I've got one text winner for the trivia question. Again, remember, you can only play once. I'm still rowing with the U um, Central Bank of the Bahamas to change those rules to see if we could have, uh, you can win more than once. But thank you so much for playing. Thank you for tuning in. And you guys stay tuned because on the other half of the hour, we're going to continue our On The Clock Guardian Radio AM mashup Man Down Wednesday with a question about, Mr. Nuri, what's the title for the show? Well, I know there will be some rowing. Yes. We'll be rowing. talking about language, yeah. Creole. Bohemian Creole versus Bohemian dialect. Yeah. Does, does the Bahamas have its own version of English? No. But anyway, we can talk about that soon. Oh, yeah. The rowing has <laughs> already started, you guys. Mr. Cooper, uh, Kyle, uh, Sumaya mm -hmm. from the U.S. Embassy. Thank you guys so very much for joining me Thank today. you for having Thanks. us. You guys it was have great. a great day. Thank, Thank you, too. You too. Good. Sail them in the harbor, I'll sail them in the keys I'll sail them on the ocean, I'll sail them all day long I'll sail them up to Bobby, I'll sail them up and down